Hello guys and welcome to this new Open Home Automation video. So in this video, we are going to see how to use the ESP8266 chip, which is a small and very convenient Wi-Fi chip to, to use for all your home automation and IoT projects. And in this video, we are going to see how to use it to control a lamp or any electrical devices in your home simply by having a graphical interface sitting right on the chip. So you will be able to control it from your computer, but also from any mobile device like a phone or a tablet. So let's dive right into the project. So we are first going to see what components we need for this project. So the core of the project will of course be the ESP8266 chip. And you can basically use any chip, you will see that um, the article on the website is using an Olimex board for the project. But here, I will simply use an Adafruit uh, ESP board, which is, I think, one of the easiest to work with because it just, you see uh, this nice um, FTDI connector here, so you can directly plug an FTDI board without, you know, having to make any connections. It's also quite easy to put on a breadboard. So with this, you will also need an FTA board, of course. So I'm using um, this little board from DF Robots, but you can use any kind of FTDA board. So you will also need the usual breadboard that we will use to make all the required connections. And finally, to actually connect an electrical device, you will need a power switch tail kit which is a very convenient way to uh, connect electrical devices like a lamp, but also any kind of devices to our projects. So as I show you on one side, you have uh, this mail connector and on the other side, you will have this normal uh, female connector. So you can plug uh, a lamp or any kind of electrical devices you can see on the, the Power Switch Tail website, you can see the different uh, hardware that they have, and you can actually choose uh, hardware that corresponds to the power of the device you want to control. Uh, I don't know how much is this one actually, but it can easily control any kind of lamps that you have in your home. Okay, so now we are going to see how to actually assemble the project. So thanks to the Adafruit ESP board, it's quite easy. So basically you need first to put this board in the middle of the breadboard. Um, then we'll simply connect the, the control part of the um, power switch tail kit. So basically this control signal will be connected to pin number five, which is just over there. And now we have to connect the rest to the ground. So there are actually two grounds on the um, on the Adafruit board. So one is um, just over here, and the other one is over there. Yeah. So that's a fully already a fully assembled project. So the that. Just two things we still need to do, actually placing the um, FTDI board on the Adafruit board. So to know in which side to insert it, you just need to make the ground match the other ground on the board. So just like this. And now for the power switch tail, I will not show this now, but you of course need to plug um, a lamp or any electrical device into the female header and then the, the other cable you need to plug in into the mains uh, electricity. But now first we're going to see how to configure our board. So now we are quickly going to look at the code and of course as usual all the code is available on the GitHub repository of the project. You can just find it by visiting the corresponding article on the Open Home Automation website. And uh, let's look at code now. So first we include the retail libraries and the whole project is based on this ARES UI library, which is very mm, convenient library to build, you know, very simple um, graphical interface to control your board. And the cool thing is here that the interface and 
all the rest is hosted on the chip itself. So there is no interface running on your computer. You don't need to install anything, any apps. It will all run on the board itself. And then uh, that's where you will need to put your Wi-Fi name and password. So that's the only lines you will have to change. And then basically what we do is we give a title to this uh, interface. We set the but a button, so an on off button on pin number five, which is a pin where we connected the um, power switch tail kit. Um, then we connect to the Wi-Fi. We print the IP address of the board. This will be quite useful in a moment. And finally, um, we also handle all the calls that will go to uh, the board. And then whenever there is a call, we just display the interface. And it's something that we will see in a moment. Before you can move to the next steps, you also need to select the right board for your project. So you just do in tools, board, and as you can see here, you have all the ESP modules. So I get the Adafruit module. For example, if you follow the tutorial from the home Open Home Automation website, you will need to check this Olimets module. And this is a J, and then you just need to select the corresponding uh, port on which your board is connected to. So now we are ready to uh, actually compile and upload the program. So as you can see here, there is a project that we assembled before. Uh, to put the board into programming mode, where well, it's very easy with the Adafruit board, you just need to press two buttons at the same time. This is what I will do now. And then simply release the reset button. And that, as you can see, the GPIO 0 LED, it's still on, um, which means that the board is ready to be configured. And now on my computer, I will simply press the upload button. And as you can see, the program is now being uploaded to the board by the FTDI board. And now this is finished, so we can actually come back to the computer and uh, continue the project and now we are actually going to test the project. So now once the program is uploaded to the board, we still need to do something. Well, we don't actually know how to access the board, so we need the IP address of this board. So for this, we'll simply open the serial monitor and we're going to reset the board now. So I click on reset, you can see this strange character has been printed, but also after a while you will see that the Wi-Fi has been connected to, uh, which means you enter the right password, the server started, and it's accessible at this IP address. And this is the IP address that you will need in a moment to actually control the lamp. So now we are going to simply... So now we are simply going to test the project. So with the IP address that you have on the board, just do it in your favorite browser and type the IP address of the board. And as you can see, it directly goes to this interface, um, which is called Relay Control here because it's a general uh, interface to control any kind of device. Here we turn to the lamp. And notice that this interface is really running on the board itself. It's not like I have this interface on my computer and I control the board. This is right on the board itself. So now I will simply test the interface. So I will put the lamp on just by clicking on the on button. And as you can see on your screen, the lamp is now on. And I can switch it off again just by clicking it off. And I will do it again just to illustrate the process. Lamp is on and off again. And 
I don't know if I can show you this now, but the interface is also responsive, which means that you can actually use it from a tablet, from a phone. So I'll just try it now to see. Yeah, as you can see, when I scale my browser, I access to the mobile version of the interface. And as you can see, it still works just as before. But now we have buttons that are much easier to press when you are on your mobile phone, for example. And again, because this runs on the board itself, you don't have to install any apps or, you know, do anything on your phone. You just need to go to this address with your phone or any device in your home and you can control the lamp. So this is the end of this tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it. As usual, please refer to the corresponding article on the Open Home Automation website to find all the code, all the detailed explanation on how to configure and build this project. And if you have any questions, please either go to the website, leave a comment there, or directly leave a comment uh, below on YouTube. And I will see you in the next video.